looking at Houston's, you guys have a lot of young talent. You guys remind me a lot of us. You guys are maybe a couple years behind. You guys remind us of us a couple years ago. And um, what I see is a team full of young talent, great coaching, all those type of things. And my thing was with what Houston has now, especially when I saw how good Reed Shepard was, right? I was like, well, what Houston has now, I would pivot off of guys like Fred Van Vliet, off of Dylan Brooks, try to get those guys off the roster. And even if it take, even if it means a short step back, I can see you guys riding with your young guys, letting them develop, letting them kind of groom themselves a little bit. Um, and I said, we see what my boy Will said. And I went on your page, you were saying something totally different. You was like, I'm not a fan of that. Like, yeah, you you even said anybody who doesn't want Fred Van Vliet on his team doesn't really understand basketball too well. So you, you put like, that a little bit more blunt than I said it, but <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it for me is like, yeah, yeah, do your thing. Yeah, yeah no, nah, I get why people say that because like in traditional senses, you would like like um you just throw your young guys into the fire, let mm -hmm. them grow. Like John Morant came in day one starter, mm -hmm. um like all-star by like what year two, year three, year two. Like I that. think he was all-star year two, yeah. Yeah, so like he came in right away and just took off. And I, I think playing you know, team his first year though. They went from yeah. being a lottery to play in the first year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and he joined because he was he was after JJJ. So yeah. Um, and y'all got Bane was what 2020? Was that what yeah, Bane the next year? Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah, like he kind of came into somewhat of like an existing foundation and they kind of already had some. He was kind of just like, all right, I'm gonna push all over the top. We didn't really have that, right? It, mm -hmm. We kind of didn't have a foundation at all. And watching the Rockets for the last three years before we signed Fred and before we signed Dylan. I mean, like I said, we can, we can be honest. It was terrible. It was not mm -hmm. good. Like right, right. there's tanking teams and there's what the Rockets were. We were tanking, <laughs> but, but it was like from a, <laughs> a visual standpoint, it looked bad. It was bad, selfish, like disorganized, not like it was mm -hmm. like if they, we were the example of what not to do that. That's, right. that's what it was. And so to kind of get that out of the arena and not just like in the locker room, but also like to like the, the public perception of us, we needed someone to come in and kind of bring that short. That's why that's one reason why Ime Yudoka was so good because he was the complete opposite from the last right. coaching staff, mm -hmm. right? And then I think Fred is the embodiment of Ime on the court. And he um like the, like I said, that disorganized, dysfunctional, just like all over the place, bunch of young guys out there running. Fred kind of was the equalizer for that, right? So we still have a night, we still have a you know. A bunch of young guys out there, but they're not just out there running wild, step back three in all game, and guys right. just getting over the place, right? Like if the tempo starts getting too fast, and we need someone to come in and like slow it down for us, like all right, give me the ball, you know, let's run this offense, run this set. We we know how to we, we know how to execute. Let's execute mm -hmm. um, and and get the results. And I think that like we needed that. And then moving forward, I don't think there's nothing wrong with just like bringing guys along slowly, right? I, I think that if we have a guy who, who like, breaks out and it's like, look, like John Moran was like, look, this guy's way too good to not be starting mm -hmm. and getting 30, 35 minutes a game. I think that if Fred or Dylan's in the way of that, they'll be gone. I don't think that we'll, yeah. we'll see a scenario where we have an all-star that's on the bench because Dylan's in his way. Like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I think that we're going to bring guys along, and we're going to – like one thing that Ime Yudoka preaches in practice, which I love, is he preaches you earn what you get. Nothing mm -hmm. that he's not giving nothing to nobody. So training camp comes around, the season practice comes around, whatever. If you want to start over Fred Van Vliet, go earn it. Go take the spot from him. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's a good way to develop young uh, young pieces. He's also off the books after this year anyway. So mm -hmm. using him for one last year to you know provide competition in the locker room for young guys. Yeah, he's going. Fred Van Vliet is. He's a. Yep. This, he's oh, expiring. I didn't know. Yeah. Yep. He's expiring after this year. And then on top of that, like we just brought in Reed. Right. Reed. I'm Reed is someone who. Scott High on obviously think he can be mm -hmm. really, really good one day. I don't think there's a better mentor on the league, maybe like Chris Paul for, for, for Reed Shepard than Fred Van Vliet. They're, they're both mm -hmm. undersized guards um, who, you know, need to find ways to impact the game without using their, like, their size. Athleticism and size. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, without having to be the most athletic guy on the court. And I think there, if there's someone in the NBA who knows how to do that, it's Fred Van Vliet. And so, yeah, I, I do want, if nothing else, for at least half a season for Reed Shepard to share a locker room with Fred Van Vliet and kind of soak up some of that knowledge from him before we just completely transition off of it so yeah i'm like i i'm not i'm not in the camp that we need to get rid of and and, and for the record just i'll land my plan here i'm not a fred van vliet fan like mm. not a big fred van vliet guy at all I, I wanted james harden fred pissed me off like 20 30 times throughout the regular season last year but i i can step back and understand like what he brought to the table and why 
it was like necessary to yeah. to bring him on. So. Yeah.